Hey guys, I'm just going to do a quick video on uh, this switch mode power supply. This is out of um, one of the uh, fiber optic converters. It's it's got a it's one of the um, power supplies that's uh, it's got a redundant power supply. So there's two of these in there. Anyways, I was just uh, thinking uh, I I cracked it open. I was very impressed with how simple uh, the design is. It's a switch mode power supply and um, I just wanted to quickly explain to you guys how switch mode power supplies work because it's a very simple, this is a simple design um, so basically if you don't know what a switch mode power supply is um, you know the little things that you plug into your wall that are like boxes, uh, let me, they're like transformers is what they are um, geez I don't have any I don't have any laying around here, but you guys know what I'm talking about. The little things that you plug in and they cover your whole outlet and you can't plug anything else in. And they're heavy. That's a transformer. And what that is, is it's just a, a, an iron core with a bunch of copper round around it. Copper wire. And it changes the voltage through an electromagnetic field. Anyways, um, that's, I'm just going to explain to you. Um, so that's what those do, and they're they're very inefficient, and they're heavy, and they're they are probably more reliable than this though, because all they are is just a piece of iron and some copper, and uh, they current limit themselves sort of with ballasting. They sort of inductively ballast themselves. But anyways, I'm getting away off topic here. Um, th what this is a switch mode power supply, so it's has a transformer as well, but it's a much more complicated process to do the same thing. However, this is a 50 watt power supply. And there it is. Oh, it doesn't, oh yeah, there it is, says 50 watts. Anyway, um, it's a 50 watt power supply, which if you had a transformer the same size that would could put out this much power, that as, as much power as this does, it would be huge. I mean, it would weigh, I don't know how many pounds, it'd weigh a few pounds, and it would be ridiculously huge and bulky, and you couldn't, it wouldn't be practical. Um, and they don't supply as smooth a power, they don't supply as uh, reliable as a voltage or anything, but anyways, so I'm going to explain to you just sort of how these work. The basics. I'm not going to explain to you exactly this design and every little resistor and everything in here. I'm just going to explain to you how switch mode power supplies work in general. And I'm going to I'll draw it out for you real quick here on the board. Anyways, you have the 120 that comes in here. I should turn this around. And it of course goes to your fuse and your little um, MOVs, your metal oxide varistors, and your chokes. This is just to protect it for um, transient voltage peaks, like for uh, surge protection. Basically, is what that is this just smoothens out the power anyways it goes through this little bridge rectifier here which takes the 120 volts AC it turns it into DC it may also be 240 volts AC because this one is it will do either 120 or 240 or anywhere in between there and it goes into this rectifier this rectifier goes into this capacitor and this changes the rectifier changes it from AC to DC so it's going from the AC that's coming into the wall to DC and stored into this capacitor as a reservoir for when you have peaks or when your peaks are zero so when you have an AC wave here let me draw this out for you uh, when you have when you have an AC wave like this you're always gonna have a period where there's zero volts right there and this is gonna be uh, 170 because AC peaks at 170 or at least 120 volts does peak at 170 volts and there's always going to be this point where you have no no current flowing right so, uh, I don't know why I drew another circle uh, you're gonna have this point right here where there's zero current flowing there's nothing going so there's no electricity flowing and uh, in order to compensate for that, you have the little capacitor here, which supplies current. It's sort of like a very fast battery. It's not a chemical. They stored uh, power, though, so it's <coughs> it's very quick at supplying power. And it'll, it supplies just enough power to cover for those, those points where you have uh, zero voltage or zero current flowing. Anyway... Um, so you have your DC supply here, and then you have uh, 
one side, the positive side, that goes straight to the transformer. This is a switch mode transformer. So this has a primary of whatever voltage you're supplying to it. But uh, anyway, so you have the positive leg that goes straight to the transformer. And then the negative leg goes into this MOSFET. And a MOSFET is basically just a switch that can switch very, very fast. It turns the, the DC current to this transformer and switches it back into AC, except at a higher frequency. This little chip over here, um, which is an SK8085, again, I'm not going to get into the very specific design of this because every switch mode power supply is different, but this is just an, a very simple one. This chip right here um, supplies a very, very high frequency. I don't know. I didn't look at the exact frequency. You can set it for this chip. It's a pulse width modulated frequency. Um, so I'll draw that out in a second. But what it does is this supplies a tiny little pulse, and it reads how much the uh, transformer is getting, and it, it basically supplies the pulse to this MOSFET to tell it how fast to pulse. So what's happening is you have, here let me draw the whole thing out just kind of in general here. Sorry about the, if I'm shaky, but anyways, you have uh, AC current, 120 volts, 20 volt, and it's coming. And we're not going to do all the metal oxide varistors and the fuses and stuff, but we're just going to keep it simple. Um, and you have your, sorry for the crappy drawing, I'm kind of, I'm not even looking at the board, I'm looking at the, uh, the screen here. Anyway, you have your bridge rectifier. Um, this is a crappy bridge rectifier. Anyway, um, I'm doing all this looking off of my iPhone screen. This is a, a hor horrific drawing. It's very, very bad. But you have positive here, and you have minus here. So you have plus and minus. So let's just call this uh, 200 volts DC right here. So you have 200 volts DC. So you have all this just to make a, a DC voltage and then what this does is you have uh, the positive side go straight to the transformer. So you have your transformer here. It's, it's sorry again for the really really crappy drawing. This is this is I mean ridiculous. But then you have the MOSFET here, and this is the little transistor that you see here, and you have it's like um, this. This is going to be the um, the gate, and then you have the drain, which we will draw like this and this goes out to the transformer and sorry about that and then this is the um, it should be more like that sorry about the okay and then this right here is the source so you have a uh, source you have gates and drain and then this is your output coil right here. And this is going to be, uh, let's just say, 12 volts. I don't think it's 12 volts in this case, but let's just say it is. In a lot of cases, it is. So you have 200 volts DC. The positive goes straight to the transformer. And then the negative goes through the MOSFET. And the MOSFET basically switches the negative on and off very, very fast, which supplies a pulse to this transformer. Now, this MOSFET is switched by the little IC, which we'll just draw as a square, and we'll call it uh, IC, and this is different in every case, whatever the part number you have, it's going to be a different chip in every case, and then the IC supplies the pulses to the transistor. So uh, that's just a basic schematic, and then since you have 12 volts out here, it's going to be AC. So let's just say this is being pulsed at, um, uh, f let's just say 30 kilohertz. So you're going to have 30 kilohertz of 200 volts going into here, and you're going to have 30 kilohertz 
of 12 volts coming out here. And then basically you rectify that again. I'll, sh I'll, I'll draw this a uh, little bit different now to ex show you a little something different. And hold on. Sorry about this, guys. And I can't edit this because my laptop isn't here right now. Anyway. So you have... Uh, it's pulse width modulated, which means it's not a it's not a 50/50 cycle. So the pulses going into the transformer look something like this. And it's it peaks just at small times. And this is what controls your currents, your voltage coming out of the transformer. Um, and it's gonna the chip is gonna adjust it based on what voltage you have coming in whether it's 120 or 240 and so this is what it looks like and this would be like 0 volts and this would be 200 volts going into the transformer and on the outside of the transformer you're gonna have the same thing except it's gonna be uh, 0 volts and um, 12 volts coming on the secondary side of the transformer so you have going into the transformer on this side you have 200 volts being pulsed just like this at let's just say 30 kilohertz 30,000 times a second this is controlling the the power going into this transformer but this is telling this how to control the power going into this transformer coming out on the other side is just 12 volts but it is 30 kilohertz as well so you gotta turn that back into DC so you just have another little rectifier right here and what that does is it takes these pulses at 12 volts so you have now you have your transformer and you have your uh, 200 uh, 200 volts uh, AAC going in this is going to be 30 kilohertz pulse width modulated it's going to be PWM and then that's the that's the primary side of the transformer and on the secondary side it's just going to be uh, 12 volts, volts, uh, PWM, and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be the pulses, just like I showed you, at 12 volts, so it's going to look something like this, and this is 12, and this is 0, and then, so what you do is you rectify that, um, let's just say there's a rectifier here. I'm not going to draw the whole rectifier again because you guys know how a rectifier looks. So anyways, you have the, the, the plus and the minus. And then you put a couple capacitors here. Um, just like that. Sorry about that, guys. My iPhone stopped recording like it normally does. So um, it's annoying, but anyway... <clears throat> this is it. So you have 12 volts pulsed like this coming out. It goes to the rectifier, which is. Let me see if I could turn the flash back on. That's the little rectifier. So you have the transformer output feeding into the rectifier. And then it goes to the capacitors. That's all these little canisters right here, these guys. And then, of course, you have a couple inductors and stuff to filter out the pulses. Anyway. So then um, you have the 12 volts pulsed, it goes through the rectifier, and it's filtered. And what this does is the filter caps make it so that it has a constant voltage, so that the voltage is steady. So again, I showed you how the capacitor works for a perfect AC sine wave. You have your sine wave, just like that, and then you have, it's at zero. There's a zero point where there's no power and the capacitor has 12 volts so it fills in for that split second when it's zero same thing here you have to have a lot more capacitors because you have a lot more downtime see this is all zero right here this is all zero 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 and this is 12 volts 12 12 and um, so this is giving you pulses of 12 volts, which is charging these capacitors, and then when it's zero volts, because there's no electricity coming out of the transformer, um, the capacitors will supply that 12 volts f during that time, and that gives you a steady just uh, 12 volts outputs coming out of here. And that's your 12 volt power supply, and this is going to be 12 volts DC. So that's pretty much it as far as a switch mode goes. Um, 
a, that's a switch mode, just a linear power supply. I mean, I'm not going to race it all real quick. i just show you. A linear power supply just goes into a transformer, a big, bulky, huge, heavy metal transformer. It's made out of iron. This is made out of um, graphite. It's like a ferrite type of material. It's not a graphite, but it's sort of like that. And you have 120 volts AC, 60 hertz going in. And then on the output, you have your whatever voltage, let's just say in this case 12 volts. These are not proportional or anything. This is a crappy drawing I'm doing all this. It's, it's explaining it, but it's not too detailed, and it's very five-minute sketchy crap. Anyway, this is 12 volts AC at 60 hertz. And then you just have a bridge rectifier and a couple capacitors. So you have, um, going into it, you have 12 volts, or 120 volts. 120, I know it's 170, but let's just stick with the uh, average amounts here. And then on the outputs, you have the same thing, except it's much smaller. So you have something like this. And this is 0, and this is 12, and this is 12. So you have a 60 hertz sine wave coming on the outside of the transformer. That is 12 and 12 peaks, and then you just rectify that, and you get 12 volts DC, and you filter it with a couple caps, and it's 12 volts DC that's, that's smooth, and you don't have any dips in power. But this is inefficient, and it's heavy. Like I said, a transformer this size is going to weigh, you know, I don't know how many pounds, but it's going to be a lot. Not a lot of pounds, but it's just heavy and bulky, and it's, it's not... People don't like them, and especially when you have to have two of them for redundancy. But these actually, these switch mode power supplies are a lot more likely to fail than a transformer because a transformer is just a hundred percent. It's just an iron and copper. Really, there's no no way you a transformer can fail unless you designed it bad. You have a bad, a bad design or something. And like I said, they sort of have the tendency to limit themselves a lot of the time. But anyways. And here you have so many components, you have uh, MOSFETs, you have ICs, you have uh, rectifiers and capacitors and uh, tons of things that can just fail. It's a lot of more fail points than just a transformer and a rectifier. So these fail a lot more often, however they are a lot more, uh, they're more um, smoother power, they're just a lot better. I don't know. And they're lighter, very very light. It it's. It makes more of a difference when you get into power supplies that are, you know, 750 watts or 1,000 watts. This is only a 50 watt power supply, but, um, you know, the average computer may have a 500 watts or a 750 watt power supply. And if you had a transformer that was that big, it would be probably like 20 pounds or something. It'd be, no, not 20 pounds, but it'd be big. It'd weigh like 10 pounds. Um, and you don't want to have a 10 pound brick in your computer. It's basically like throwing a brick in your computer and it's very very heavy versus something that just weighs you know very very light and it's more efficient. Um, so that's the difference between a, a linear power supply and a switch mode but that's basically how switch mode works and I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, I, I can get into way more, way, way more detail into how these work. I just wanted to generally explain the principles of them and how they do what they do. You know, they rectify it and go to high frequency. That's the main thing in any switch mode power supply is the high frequency. That's what allows you to shrink these transformers down to nothing. And they don't, they're not even made out of iron. They're made out of some ferrite material that's very lightweight. And that's where you score in the switch mode power supplies, but they're a lot more complicated. Anyways, that's basically how they work, and if you guys have any questions or anything you want to know about these or anything I can help you guys with, um, then uh, just shoot me a question or comment or whatever, and um, hope you guys enjoyed it.